All right, well, we're going to get started with a speed drill, our first speed drill of the uh, second quarter. If you open up to the score page of your speed drill booklets, if you open up the score page, you can see what your average was for those first 14 or so. Most of you 14. Some of you had some absences, so it's less than 14. So you can see what your average was. So the goal now in this quarter is can we do better than that? So for each speed drill, your goal is can I do better on this speed drill than I did on last quarter's average? Okay, so that's the objective, or in some cases, just to keep it going. Elaine has accomplished something I've never seen before, not even to give a shout out to Scott many years ago, was in my eighth grade math class, one of the fastest, smartest math kids in junior high I'd ever seen. Even he never did what Elaine did, and that was she was perfect on every single speed drill last quarter. Truly remarkable. I was not perfect on every speed drill when I was in seventh grade. I was very good at math, obviously, so that was really, really impressive feat there for Elaine. So uh, the bar is set very high for you. Keep it up. All right, but for the rest of us, since you can't improve on 100, for the rest of us, though, our goal is to improve on what we did in the first quarter. And we're going to go ahead and now open up to page six. Open up to page six. We're going to do speed drill number 15. Speed drill number 15, you've got some fractions, you've got some decimals. It's kind of an assortment of things here. You're going to have four minutes, so a little bit more time than the usual for this speed drill. Go in the order that suits you best. If you're better with decimals than fractions, do the decimals first. If you're better with fractions than decimals, do those first. But you have four minutes, and you may begin.
pencils down. And get out a pen. Pencils off your desk, in fact. And get out a pen. And exchange with the person behind you, person in the back. Bring yours to the front. Exchange with the person behind you, person in the back. Bring yours up to the front. Sign your name at the bottom of the page as the grader. Sign your name at the bottom of the page as the grader. In pen. Again, pencils should be off your desks. All right, these are 11 points each. 11 points each. Number one, they've already lined everything up for you. It's just a matter of adding correctly. Get 59.88. 59.88. Number two, subtracting, just a matter of borrowing correctly. And of course, filling in that zero there above the last digit in the thousandths place. So you get 4.531. 4.531. Yes, sir. If they don't put decimals, it's still three. Mark it wrong for now, and I'll decide if I want to give partial credit if they left the decimal out. But no, the decimal should be there. 4.531, the answer number two. Number three, uh, the answer will be 4.896. Three decimal places in that answer, 4.896. Number four also has three decimal places in the answer, 3.322. 3.322. That's probably one of the easier ones on there because you're multiplying by ones. Number five, uh, to get the common denominator and then adjust for the uh, improper fraction at the end, you end up with 21 and 1 sixth. 21 and 1 sixth. Number six, should be pretty easy. Turn that into a six and four fourths and subtract. You get six and one fourth. Six and one fourth. I feel like seven's also pretty easy. Make it a 12 and five fifths, you get four and three fifths. Four and three fifths. So I think six, six and seven might have been the easiest two problems on the speed test. Number eight, do need a common denominator, but that works out pretty well. You get seven and one fourth. Seven and one fourth. And for number nine, got to make those improper fractions. Do the multi, do the canceling, do the multiplying, turn it back into a mixed number. That was a little more involved. Four and one thirty-sixth, the answer. Four and one thirty-sixth is the answer. They're 11 points each. So minus 0, of course, would be a 100. Minus 1 would be an 89. Minus 2 would be a 78. Minus 3 would be a 67. Minus 4 would be a 56. Hopefully, we don't need to go further than that. Figure the score, 11 points each. Put it in the score blank. Also, put it on the score blank. Next to it is speed drill 15 on the score page. Once you've got the scores on there, people in the front, stand up, take them to the people in the back. Everyone else, just pass them one desk forward so that you have your own again. And take a look at your speed drills. And let's see, any hundreds? Any hundreds? Got a couple of you. How about um, 89s? You only missed one. A couple there as well. That's very good. 78, still pretty good. You just missed two. Excellent. Three's not, three's not bad. 67s. All right, now questions. Questions. I know we're not in the decimal or fraction section anymore, but hey, we still didn't know how to work with these. Michael? Never mind. Never mind. Figured it out? All right. Any other questions? Any questions on the speed drill? All right. Pass those forward. If you would, putting yours on top. So as it come forward to you, put yours on top. Once you pass them forward, page 224 in your textbooks. Michael, let's get them passed forward, sir. Page 224 in your textbooks. Let's take a look at your homework that you did last night. You did numbers 1 through 19 in the homework section. Numbers 1 through 19 in the homework section. We've uh, shifted gears. We're no longer focusing on U.S. customary units class. We've started working on Me metric. metric units. Metric units. And metric units really have three basic units. If we're talking about how much something weighs or how much mass something has more specifically, we would use what basic unit class? Gram. gram. Now, is a gram big or is a gram small? Small. Small. In fact, Michael, it takes how many grams just to make an ounce? 28.35. Got it. 28.35. Gram is very, very, very tiny. All right? And, of course, it takes 16 ounces just to make a pound. So we could get either an ounce is very small, the gram not much smaller. Um, if we were to measure how much something can hold, if we wanted to measure 
how much water is here. Class, we could measure that in liters, right? And uh, what is a liter really close to in the English system, or the U.S. customary? See, old habits die hard. I grew up calling it the English system. Sam? Um, is it like 2.2 gallons? No, it's about, about 2.2 liters. Uh, excuse me, no. Just under two liters. Uh, just under four liters make a gallon. Um, so, Ben? Uh, quart. A liter is about the same as a quart. It's a tiny bit bigger, but it's basically the same thing as a quart. We're very, very close. Um, and then the, if we want to measure how long something is class, uh, we would uh, measure things in meters, right? And a meter is really close to what other unit? Back to Sam for some redemption. What is a meter very close to in the U.S. customary system? A yard, right? That's a meter stick, but a yard stick is very, very similar. When I was in school, everybody had yard sticks. Now everybody has meter sticks because they're like, there's already a yard on there. So why wouldn't you want the meter stick? Has both. Uh, but anyway, um, but a crayon is so small. Like, if I tried to measure Griffin in grams, like, that would be stupid because, I mean, he's a big, strong, seventh grade guy, right? Yeah. Or whatever you want to think about it. Just, I'm just, <laughs> just picking on you, Griffin. Uh, but he's a big, strong, seventh grade guy, right? takes 28.35 grams just to make a single ounce. And he's many ounces, right? You know, big, strong, seventh grade guy, you know? So he's starting to count on his fingers. Uh, anyway, uh, ran out of fingers pretty quick. So anyway, picking <laughs> on Griffin. Um, but, uh, but grams don't really work, do they? We need lots of grams, maybe even thousands of grams. Class, what is a thousand grams? Kilogram. Kilogram, right? We use that prefix kilo to mean a thousand. Uh, if we wanted to measure hundreds of grams, class, we could use the prefix? Hecto. Hundreds of grams would be hectograms. Uh, if we wanted to measure uh, 10 grams? Deca. Decagrams, which is still smaller than an ounce, right? Um, if we wanted to go really small, though, maybe, maybe we're just trying to measure a few grains of sand. Well, in that case, we might want something very, very small, maybe a tenth of a gram. Decigrams. Or a hundredth of a gram. Centigrams. Or maybe, and they measure, you know, the, uh, the pills that you would take, right? They measure how much vitamin C is in there in incredibly tiny units. They measure them in thousandths of grams, class. No. Milligrams, right? So we have these different metric prefixes. And there's a good way to remember the order of these metric prefixes, a pseudo-historical pseudo-fact. And uh, what is that pseudo-historical pseudo-fact that we'd be well to remember, Luciana? King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. Say that with me, class. King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. Now, we do have to remember that the first D is a D-A, not just a D. Um, but what do these actually stand for? Say that with me, class. Kilo, hecto, deca, unit, deci, centi, milli. Unit, there's no prefix on it. It's just the regular gram, liter, or meter. But all the others will have that prefix on there. And we said to convert, we just look at the prefix that we are starting with. And we put a dot under it. Maybe it's deci. And then uh, we go to the unit that we want. Maybe it's hecto. Boink, boink, boink. And if we boink, boink, boink three places that way, then we go to our actual number and we find the decimal point. If it's not there, it's at the end of the number. We go boink, boink, boink. And we're done. We fill in gaps with zeros if we need them. That's what we were doing on the homework. Numbers 1 through 19 on page 224. Good, good, good. Excellent. C, ya. We. You were out yesterday, weren't you? This seating chart change messed it all up on you. You were, you were, you were out, sort of. See me after class. We'll talk about that. All right, number one. Which unit's bigger, a centimeter or a meter, Kirsten? Meter. A meter. Which unit's bigger, a mile or a kilometer, Michael? A mile. A mile. Number three. By the way, anyone remember about what fraction of a mile a kilometer would be? Anyone? Mm. Michael. Three Not three fourths, a little smaller. Half a mile? A little bit bigger. You just want a tissue? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Is it like five? It's right between a half and three fourths. Five eighths. 
right, right between those two, five eighths of a mile. Uh, let's see, which is bigger, the quart or the liter? Griffin, wait on. The liter, just by a tiny, tiny amount. Decaliter or deciliter, Bryson? Decaliter. Uh, centigram or hectogram, Ben? Hector. Hectogram, milligram, or ounce, Michael? Ounce. Clearly the ounce, right? The ounce is already bigger than the gram. It's going to be way bigger than just a milligram. So yes, the ounce. Number seven, we were converting. Nine hectometers. How many millimeters, Elaine? 900,000. 900,000. 7.3 kilograms. How many decigrams? Griffin? Um, Number eight. 73,000. 73,000. 73,000. Three liters. How many centiliters, Kirsten? 300. 300. 28 de deciliters. How many decaliters then? Um, pay attention. Number 10. Sorry. 28.28. 0.28 is correct. 570 centimeters. How many hectometers, Sam? 0 0.0570. 0 0.0570. We could just say 0 0.057. I don't have to keep that last zero, but it's not wrong either. Uh, 586 grams, how many kilograms, Bryson? 0 0.0586. Hmm, Luciana? 0.5. Now, careful there. We're starting at the unit, and we're just going one, two, three places. And so, remember, you're not, here's the key. You need to actually take the time to draw the decimal and the points, because you're not counting these. You're not counting one, two, three, four. Don't count the letters. Count the points. One, two, three three boinks. Does that make sense? I think you counted the letters and said four. You're counting the boinks, not the letters. So it's important to actually draw the boinks. Uh, point five eight six. That's my guess as to what you did there. Let's go back to Bryson for redemption. Back to the U.S. customary system for a quick review. 15 tablespoons. How many teaspoons, Bryson? 45. 45 because we're going from larger tablespoons that serve mashed potatoes to smaller teaspoons that stir the hot cocoa. Multiply by three to get 45. 144 inches, how many feet, Michael? 22. For number 14. How many inches in a foot? 12. And we're going from little inches to big feet, so we divide, right? 144 divided by 12? Oh, 12. 12. 12 feet is correct. Uh, for redemption, Michael, number 15, 13 tons, huge. How many pounds the smaller multiply? 26,000. 26,000. Number 16, highway crossed the river that was 4.25 kilometers wide. How wide is the river in decameters? Elaine? 425. Good, we're going to go boink, boink that way two times to get 425 decameters. Number 17, a tree in Hector's front yard was only three meters tall. It's a little baby tree. They're just starting to grow it. Bought it from the store and uh, bought it from the, the, the nursery, whatever they call the place where you buy all those plants. And this baby tree is just three meters tall. But how many decimeters, how many hand widths uh, approximately would that be? Kirsten? 30. 30 decimeters. Number 18, Peter walked the length of, the length of his front porch. If the front porch is 500 centimeters, how long was the front porch in meters, Ben? Five. Five meters. Number 19, Caspian Sea is 11,990 hectometers long. How many kilometers long is the Caspian Sea? Bryson? 1,199. Good, 1,199 kilometers. We just need to go boink one time that way. Was anyone perfect on one through 19? Anyone perfect? Kirsten, anyone just missed one or two? Anyone is three? Okay, questions. Any of these we need to see worked out or have explained to us? Any questions? Corey, any questions on these? All right. Uh, look up, if you would, just above this on the page, uh, above the homework section. I want you to do the 76 to 81 at the top of page 224, just above the homework section. 76 to 81, just some miscellaneous review problems. <coughs>
Right, save time, we want to put your pencils down. Let's take a look at these together. Number 76, just a basic ratio problem. There's 16 donuts and 12 cupcakes. What's the ratio of cupcakes to donuts, Kirsten? 12 to 16. You're not wrong, 12 to 16, but we always reduce. So let's take it down to? Three to four. Three to four as our answer. How many have three to four? How many are now hungry? Cupcakes or donuts. All right, number 77, a coupon granted a 30% discount with a purchase of at least $50. The total purchase was $65 before the coupon was used. Now, question class, which number matters to us, the 50 or the 65? The 65, okay? All it means is, how many, how many have seen a coupon like that where it says if you spend at least this much, you get this much off? Okay, all it means is you have to spend at least 50 for the coupon to even be worth anything. If the lady spends, uh, or if the person, I don't know why I assume it's a lady, it could be a guy, okay? If the person spends 45, does the coupon do them any good at all? No, they're still spending 45. But since they spent over 50, they are going to get that 30% discount. So we're focused on the $65. They're going to save 30% of the $65. So what do we need to do, class? Multiply. Multiply the $65 times... 0.3. And when we multiply, that's going to give us the discount. Class, that's the amount that they don't, don't pay. pay. We multiply, did we get $19.50 for the amount they don't pay? Questions on how we get that discount. You just multiply what they were supposed to pay by the percentage. Or by the percent, rather. Then, once we know the discount, class, that's what they don't pay. So what do I need to do to figure out what they do pay? Okay. Subtract. Take the 65 they were supposed to pay in the first place, subtract the 1950 they ain't got to pay no more, and we get how much they do end up having to pay. How much do they end up having to pay here? Elaine? $45.50. $45.50. Which, hey, you know, it's better than 65 bucks. How many had both answers correct? All right, a couple of you did. Questions from those who did not? All right, number 78. Bakery discounted its unsold goods the previous day at four dollar or at forty percent off. A cookie costs a dollar fifty. That's an expensive cookie. Dollar fifty. Well, okay, okay. How many been to Crumble here in town? Okay, they're more than a dollar fifty there, aren't they? So uh, I guess this is like uh, this isn't quite uh, not quite Crumble, but anyway, it's, it's still a big cookie, I presume. It was supposed to be a dollar fifty. You're getting forty percent off because it didn't sell yesterday. So, what's the discount? What's the final price of the cookie? Michael, what's the discount? 50 cents. Mm, no, Luciana? 0.6%. You also got 0.6? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I'm looking at the wrong number. I'm thinking, I was just thinking to myself, it is 60 cents. This book is wrong. No, I'm looking at the wrong answer. The first answer is 60 cents. Thank you, Michael. Evie's like screaming at her computer. No, Mr. Nasky, it's 60 cents. Sorry, Evie. All right, so it is 60 cents is the discount. So what's the final price of the cookie, Luciana? Uh, 90 cents. 90 cents. There we go. I was looking at the 90 cents. I'm like, wait a second. How would it be 90? It is, so 60 cent discount, 90 cent cookie. Uh, number 80, just order of operations. Uh, what did you get for that, Griffin? I didn't get to it. Didn't get to it. Oh, for shame. No, what's the Oh, I skipped 70. See, I'm just going right down this column. There's 79 over there. Thank you. Joey went to the gym eight days in two weeks. Let's do 79 next. Uh, what is the ratio of days he went to the gym to days he did not? Ooh, this is interesting. Do I use the two weeks in there at all, class? No. Not in the ratio, but I do need to think this. Two weeks would be how many days? 14. 14. We haven't learned that fact yet, but I think most of us know there's seven days in a week, right? I mean... My kids learned that in K-4. Okay. So seven days in a week, two weeks, 14 days. He went to the gym eight days. How many days did he not go to the gym, Griffin? Oh. Eight to six. Okay, you didn't answer my question indirectly, but I asked how many days did he not go to the gym. He didn't go to the gym six days, right? He went eight, didn't go six. There's your 14 days. But then the ratio would be eight to six days to the gym to days he didn't, but we'll reduce it to get four to three. Four to three is the ratio of days he went to the gym to days he did not. How many got four to three? How many went too fast and put four to one? Eight to two. All right. Uh, number 80, solving with order of operations. What's the last thing we're going to do in number 80 class? Mm -hmm. The last thing we do is the add. We're going to divide six by two to get? 
Three. Okay. three. Multiply that by the other three to get? Nine. nine. But we're not adding yet. We keep that nine. On the other side of the addition, we got eight divided by two, class. Four. And then we'll add nine plus four to get? Thirteen. Thirteen. Number 81. What's the first thing we have to do? Subtract. The parentheses, which happens to be subtraction. The parentheses gives us just a two. two. What's the last thing we're going to do? Subtract. The subtraction in the middle. So we're going to do the 9 times 2. 18. We're going to do the 16 divided by 2. 8. And then we're going to do the subtraction, right? The 18 minus 8 class gives us 10. 10 for our answer. Questions on that assignment? Anyone perfect on the ones you did? Even if you didn't do all of them. Questions? Flip back a page. Back to page 223. I want you to do numbers 40 to 51. Page 223. I want you to do numbers 40 to 51. You're probably going to want another sheet of paper to do all your boinking, only because there's not a whole lot of room right there to work. <coughs> Page 223, numbers 40 through 51. it tends to trip people up. If you see an M by itself, that means meter, which is the unit. G doesn't throw us off. We see G, we think, oh, grams, that's the unit. We see L, we think, okay, liter, that's the unit. The M throws us off because it is also a prefix. Just another minute or so to be working on these, and then we'll take a look at our answers together.
pencils down. Even if you're not quite finished with 40 through 51, let's take a look at our answers here on page 223. Number 40, what did you get for your answer, Michael? 484.7 centiliters, good. 484.7 centiliters. Number 41, what did you get for your answer, Elaine? 50. 50 grams is correct. Number 42, uh, what did you get for your answer, uh, Ben? Um, 9,300. Decimeters is correct. 9,300. Number 43, what did you get, Sam? 7.65. 7.65 decigrams. decigrams. Good. Number 44, uh, what did you get for your answer, Corey? I didn't get that. You didn't get that far? Okay, Corey, um, what are, what's our little uh, thing we need to have written out here? You did not watch the video yesterday, did you? You need to take responsibility for you. You understand? You need to make an effort to learn, even when you're out for a dentist visit or eye doctor visit or whatever it is, okay? Um, class, what do we need to put on the board? King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. And so, Corey, what we're gonna do is we're going to look at number which one were we on class? You made me forget 44. that. 44. And we're going to look at what they give us. What unit do they give us, Corey? Uh, grams. Grams. That's the unit, right? There's no prefix on that. It's just plain old grams, right? And we're going to boink our way until we get to what unit, Corey? Uh, millimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, on number 44, MG? Milligram. Milligram. It's still the end either way, right? So we're going to boink our way to here. Now, Corey, that means we go boink. Count them with me. One. Um, two. There we go. That's what we're going to do with the decimal in this answer. So look at what the number they gave us. They gave us a 94.7 grams. As we convert to milligrams, we're going to do the same thing with our decimal. We're going to go one, two, three. That's it. And so we're going to fill in these two gaps with zeros. And so our answer is going to be? 94,700. There we go. Number 45, what did you get for your answer, Bryson? 730 is correct. Number 46, what did you get, Luciana? 1,200.1. 1,200.1. Number 47, what did you get for your answer, Ben? 0 0.005. Careful, we're going from liter to milliliter. We're going this way. You've got the three places, but we're going this way with that decimal. So not 0 0.005, but 5000 or class... 5,000. Let me come back to you on number 48, Ben. What did you get? 0 0.0305. Good. And that time we were starting at the million going to the unit. So that time we did have to boink that direction three times. Number 49. Uh, what did you get for your answer, Michael? 2.19 decimeters. 2.19 decimeters. Number 50, Kirsten. 0.04 kilograms. 0 0.04 kilograms. And number 51, what did we get for that, Elaine? 0.04, or 51, 1,200. 1,200 centiliters, make sure you're following along with us. Uh, anyone go uh, 12 for 12, you got them all? Anyone just miss one of them? Anyone just miss one? All right, questions on any of those. Let's take a look at number 34. Read number 34 for us, if you would, Luciana. The Bemer's Creek in water is 4,008 meters high. How many centimeters high is the mountain? All right. And so they want us to convert from meters to centimeters. Class, what letter do we think when we think meters? U. U. That's the unexpectedly. And we're going to centimeters, class. That's the C. chocolate. That's the C, right? And so how many times do we have to boink to get from unexpectedly to chocolate? Right. Two places. Do we go to the left or to the right? right? To the right. If we move the decimal two places to the right, what do we get for our answer, Luciana? Um, 40,080. Well, we said we're going two places, right? From King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk from the unit to the chocolate, right? To the seat. And we're going here two places. So we're going to fill in. There we go. Two places. So 400,800 centimeters. Number 35. That's a fun one. The Apalachicola Chattahoochee River. 
Now, what that is is it's called the Chattahoochee as it goes between Georgia and Alabama, or starts in Georgia, goes down between Georgia and Alabama. When it gets to the Florida state line, they call it the Apalachicola River. Same river, it just goes by a different name. Uh, as it goes through right around where Tallahassee's at. And uh, so I grew up referring to, to it as the Apalachicola River, because I grew up in Florida. And then I moved here, it's the Chattahoochee River. And one day it dawned on me, it's like, I bet that's the same river. Just kind of knowing where geography is, I'm like, I wonder if it's the same thing. And I looked it up, sure enough, it's the same river, it just changes its name. And so anyway, the river <laughs> is 834 kilometers long. What's well, so many hectometers? Class, we're going to start at? King. King. We're going to go to? King. Henry. That's only one place. If we boink the decimal one place over, what does our answer become? Kirsten? 8,340. 8,340 hectometers is correct. Number 36. Typical paper clip has a mass of one gram. What's its mass in milligrams? Well, one way you could do this, you think what milli means, or... If you start at grams class, where is grams? U. That's the U. We're going to milligrams. Obviously, that's the M. M. So we go one, two, three places that way. What do we get for our answer here? Um, Griffin. 1,000. 1,000 milligrams. Number 37. A new building. Now, nobody would actually measure it this way. Is 33,521 centimeters high. How many meters is this? Class, we need to start at? C. C. We need to go to the? U. Good. Not to the M, but to the U. Two places that way. What do we get for our answer here? Sam? 35.21. Uh, 35.21. 35 meters. Number 38. Uh, Talia? Talia? Talia. 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 Her, she, ran 27 hectometers in a race. Danny ran twice as far. How far did Danny run in kilometers? Ooh, okay. Well, first of all, she ran 27. He ran twice as far. Plus, what's twice as big as 27? 54. 54. That's how many hectometers. But they want kilometers, kilometers right? For some reason, we change where the emphasis goes. Kilometers. So we're going to go from hectometers, Henry, to kilometers, King, go one place that way with our 54 class, we get 5.4 kilometers. And uh, number 39, a pound of butter has a mass of 454 grams. How many kilograms is a pound of butter? We're going from grams class, that's the U, U all the way to the K. K. Boink, boink, boink. And what do we get for our answer here, Corey? Good, catching on quickly, 0.454 kilograms. Notice it's just a, almost a half a pound, right? Or almost a half a kilogram. A pound is about a half kilogram, because the kilogram is about twice as big as a pound. Uh, questions on that? If you're at your seats, I want you to drop down and do 52 to 57 now. Do numbers 52 to 57. Some of these straightforward conversions, some of them might require a little bit more process than a little thinking. Yes, sir. The decimal is just the DA, right? DA is deca, and just plain D is deci. Yep. And that's why when I write them up here, I always put DA here in the deca spot so you get used to seeing the DA together.
ngambil itu. That's what I say. You have to put a little thought into it, don't you? Well, think it through. Put some effort in. Right? You're never going to grow as a person if you're like, oh, this looks hard. I just got to quit. No, you can't do that. Right? Just another minute or so to think through these. sitting there checked out. I want to make sure that wasn't easy. Well, let's take a look at these together. Number 52, uh, very straightforward, right? Clearance under overpass is 49 decimeters. What's the clearance in meters? All we have to do is convert from decimeters to meters. Very easy. What do we get? Let me see, Anna. 4.9 meters. No issue there. Number 53, also really easy. Jose rode his bike 6.7 kilometers. How many meters did he ride? We're just changing from kilometers to meters. What do we get, Kirsten? 6,700 meters. 6,700 meters. No trouble there at all. Number 54, Mr. Davis travels 83.5 kilometers to work each day. How many hectometers does he travel? Again, super stupid easy. Going from kilometers to hectometers, you just boink the decimal over. Class, we get 835 hectometers. Then we come to number 55, and you have to put in a little bit of thought. It says the cost of 50 centimeters is 75 cents. So it says, what's the cost of 8.5 meters? Well, the problem class, look this way. Especially if you didn't get it, don't be putting your head down. They don't tell us how many centimeters they're buying, do they? So let's find out. How many centimeters is 8.5 meters? Well, class, we're going to start our decimal at the... Mm, start it at the... Mm -mm, the U. This is the unit. And we're going to boink our way till we get to the... One, two. So we come over here, class, and we go one, two. How many centimeters are we buying? 850 centimeters. And every 50 centimeters costs 75 cents. How many 50s do we have? Well, we could, if we wanted to, we could actually count it. Class, count 50s with me. 50, 100, 152, 102, 53, 103, 54, 100, 4, 50, 500, 6, 5, 50, 6, 100, 6, 50, 7, 100, 8, 7, 50, 8, 100, 8, 50. You could do it that way. I think it's a slow, painful way. But you understand, you could figure it out that way. This is 17 sets, if you will, of 50 centimeters. Now, what's the much easier way to do it, class? Just divide. divide. 850 divided by 50, or rather, knock off the zeros, 85 divided by 5. 17, right? 17 lengths of 50 centimeters, correct? And every set costs 75 cents. So if we multiply 17 sets by 0.75, we're going to get how much money it costs for this length of ribbon, Michael? $11.95. Ooh, I think we might have a multiplication error somewhere in there. Let's do it real quick. 5 times 7, class? 35. 35, carry the 3. 7 times 7 plus 3? 52. 52. Put a 0. 1 times 5? Five. 5. And 1 times 7? Seven. 7. And when we add this together, we should have $12.75 for the ribbon. $12.75 for the ribbon. 
Number 56, an average parking spot is 2.5 meters wide. A cupcake shop has a parking lot that is 0.37 hectometers long. This is the lot. They want to know how many parking spaces can they put in there, right? It's 0.37 hectometers from end to end. But every parking space class takes up how much space? 2.5 meters. meters. Let's make this meters. Start the decimal class at the? Oh, A. At the H, because we have hectometers. I want to know how many meters that is. Class, I go, I boink my way to the? U. Not to the M, to the U. Boink, boink. Well, if I go boink, boink, class, how many meters? 37. 37 meters, right? And every parking space is going to take up how many meters? 2.5. So what do I need to do? Divide. Divide. Or you could do 2.55, 7.5, You No, don't do that. Divide by 2.5. Take the 37, divide by 2.5 per space. But you can divide by decimal class. Boink, boink. boink. And boink, boink. And we're going to make this stay with me at 370 divided by 25. 25 is in a 37. Once. Just once, right? There was 12 left over. Think money. How many 25s can fit in a buck 20? Four. Four. Only four. Almost five. What we can get then is 14 parking spaces. There's going to be a little extra room, but there's not quite enough room for one more. Or people cheat and they say compact car only. And that's, have you ever seen the parking spaces marked compact? That's what they did. They ran out of room for another parking space. So they left a little bit of room and just said compact car. Uh, last one we need to look at, number 57, Emily. That's a strange spelling for Emily. Emil? Maybe it's Emil. Emil calculated the total weight of his 20. Yeah, it got to be Emil because it's a his. There's no way a guy would be named Emily. Anyway, that's not politically correct. Uh, Emil, it's okay, I'm not either. Emil calculated the total weight of his 20 packages to be 110 kilograms. Each package weighed 55 decagrams. What error did he make in his calculations? What's the actual total weight? Well, if we have 55 decagrams per package class, and there's 20 packages, we just multiply by 20, can't we? And uh, so 20 packages, 55 each, right? Multiply. Zero, two times five? Yeah. 10. Two times five plus one? Yeah. So we should have 100, uh, 1,100 decagrams, right? But what did Emil say is, is uh, packages weighed? 110 kilograms, right? So we wanted to convert this over to kilograms. How many places does the decimal have to move to go from deca to kilo? Twice. Twice. But what did Emil do? Did he move it twice, class? No. Not if he got 110. He only moved it One. once, right? It should have been 11 kilograms for his 20 packages. And that would have been our answer there. That was a little bit of a different type of problem. Your homework for this evening, page 224 to 225. Page 224 to 225. You're going to do numbers 20 to 36. Page 224 to 225, do numbers 20 to 36 in the homework section. All right, you are dismissed.